You know, one of the dilemmas that I've had over the past, oh, 10 years dealing with TBI is the fact that I've never been able to find the Prozac gland. I've never been able to find the Paxil gland. Never been able to find the Lamictal gland. Still looking. Anyway, let's see. I thought this lecture was supposed to be on the 31st. So, anyway. It's my disclosures. Okay. What if the major causative factors for hormonal deficiencies and insufficiencies uh, were right in front of us and we actually saw it? Some of the differences we could have made in a group of people who sustained multiple head traumas and took the, really the hard way out by committing suicide. This is the short list. And what we're seeing also in the military is that there is one death a year, according to the federal government. There were more people killed or committed suicide in 2011 than there were killed in combat. We know repeated concussion leads to severe brain disease. Research shows it in studies on NFL that are going on in Harvard and another of other uh, institutions, ivory towers. We're seeing that repetitive head trauma leads to uh, quality of life changes. Dementia occurs and there's 19 times higher risk for Alzheimer's in people who have sustained multiple head traumas. And these are men between 30 and 49 years of age. Political stuff's on the bottom, NFL denying it and so forth. Uh, NFL, recent settlement, talk about the $765 million that I don't believe is concluded yet, but on the sideline it has concluded? Do you think so? And there's an additional $800 million on the side for research for these people. So it's a payout of $765 million and then $800 million for their treatment. Uh, management of sports-related mild TBI. Mild TBI makes up maybe 85 to 90 percent of all TBIs that we see, and the rest is in moderate to severe. And it's affecting, you know, two million people suffer with it in terms of the athletic world, with 50,000 to 300,000 athletes presently who have sustained a concussion each season. Stats out of 2012. There were 410,000 visits to VA psychs for people who had PTSD, which is just another form of uh, traumatic brain injury. As you see, you know, the interpretation of what is traumatic brain injury is, um, is very diverse. And in Iraq, one in five returning vets, and as few as one in three, already have uh, traumatic brain injury or PTSD. So, things that we're missing in general when we have a patient, uh, let me pause for a second here. Um, uh, 2004 is the first time I gave this lecture in its infancy. And in 2004, for the prior nine years, I was practicing endocrinology, hormone replacement, anti-aging medicine, interventional endocrinology. And having sustained five head traumas myself, and between the ages of 34 and 46, having been put on antidepressants, being obese, being more dull than I am now, um, had testing done, in fact, by Senogenics back in 1997, and was found to have growth hormone, testosterone, and thyroid deficiency. And once it was replaced, the entire world changed. Depression disappeared, sense of well-being, and uh, was able to uh, start doing exercise on you know daily basis and cognitive improvement just by replacing that which was deficient. What we miss in our practice when we're doing hormonal modulation or HRT, we miss asking some very basic questions to establish why did a person develop hormonal deficiency if you have it right in front of you in lab results. We assume that it's all age related. We assume that it's all age related. What we need to do as great clinicians is to go back and to test out the theory that maybe their hormone deficiency was precursed by some traumatic brain injury. There was an adolescent uh, physician 
who had a huge population of patients with um, singular or multiple hormonal deficiencies, and he didn't understand why. He went back to the birth records, peri and pre, and found that the majority of people had had some well-described um, head trauma, whether or not it was accelerations, deaccelerations, cord around the neck, high forceps, low forceps, vacuum extraction. They were in the birth canal for a long period of time with uh, cranial compression, and they found this relationship. So when we see the patients, we want to ask them a group of questions and to make absolutely sure that there's nothing that we're missing in their history. You know, the overt things, obviously, is the NFL people we see or the hockey players that have this overt or the people coming back from the military who have sustained an IED or, as you'll see, someone in a tank who has an explosion. So the program goals are straight in front of you. I'm going to touch on a couple of things. This is, uh, I apologize for any haphazard appearance of any of the slides. It's a little haphazard. I took uh, 10 presentations and put it into one. Uh, it comes from a new book that's coming out next year on TBI, The Clinical Approach to Diagnosis and Treatment. Well, the optimal goal here is to understand these three points. Acknowledge that TBI can be a significant cause of hormonal dysfunction. Acknowledge that hormonal dysfunction can be a comorbid factor for affective disorders. And therefore, acknowledge that TBI can cause significant hormonal dysfunction that can lead to affective disorders. The A equals B, B equals C, A equals C equation. Neurology. Uh, what we do is a quick assessment uh, using uh, frontal lobe um, questionnaires or confrontational evaluation for mood changes, change in social behavior, the top three of the most common that are, are listed in uh, studies. Parietal lobe, occipital, temporal, cerebellum, very important. Brain stem, then what we have is this nice composite sheet where we go through with the patient, and we check off what's there, and it's a predictive. And then we send them out for an MRI or whatever radiological study we're doing that day. And there's also a very simple way of approaching it. If you have a male patient with TBI, you just ask them the very important things like sports questions about sexuality and power tools. And if he answers abstractly about it, you got the diagnosis. And with women, about shopping, the shopping lobe, the gossip lobe, and the hairstyle and clothing. Now, I have, in my household, there are only women, so I got yelled at by my oldest daughter, who's a physician, too, about taking this assumption, but she helps me choose my clothing. Important aspect to traumatic brain injury also is that circulation, subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage, strokes, ischemia, surgical ischemia, all can cause um, deficiency or ischemia, hypoxia, um, and lead to damage to the pituitary or the hypothalamus.